DiPiano, and you are listening to the Love Mia Vita podcast. Today, my special guests are from Lola Arnau, Kathy Griswold, and Angela Gargano. Welcome, mom and daughter. So they are mom and daughter entrepreneurs who started this business from scratch, Lola Arnau. So Kathy, since you're the senior member of the team, perhaps you can share a little bit about your background with us and then we'll ask Angela to do the same. Hi, thank you very much for inviting us to be in this podcast. We appreciate that. Um, I was a chef for like 40, 40 years. And I was earlier than that, I was raised on a farm. I went to the University of Wisconsin, um, graduated from the University of Wisconsin and was in the restaurant business for 40 years. And during some of that time, I helped my daughter's business. <laughs> and that's kind of how we started to work together. Um, and I and I think my experience as a chef helped me help develop the Lola Arnau Shave Bar. Cooking is working with recipes and formulas and I've always been interested in that and how things combine and healthy things. Um, I, was, I specialized in very healthy cooking. I worked for a big company and specialized in people, uh, cooking for people with special allergies and special needs. So that always fascinated me. With the Lola Arnau Shave Bar is formulated to, for very sensitive skin and the ingredients have to be very good, very high quality, like in food. food better quality food gives you a better quality product and knowing how to source good food or knowing how to source good products and oils for our shave bar is really very important so it's somewhat similar both being a chef and and working with Lola Arnau products is very creative and there's an energy with this creativity an energy a dynamic that I love and this is this is why we are so excited to have you and Angela on our podcast because we take for granted that all products are created equal and that all companies pay the same amount of attention to the good work that they do. In your case, you're speaking our language because we agree with you. It sh if it's safe enough to put on your body, it should be safe enough to consume. So you want to make Absolutely. sure you have high quality ingredients. You want to make sure that the ingredients are well vetted. And in your case, it makes me really happy to say, I have tried your products and they are wonderful. We'll get into <laughs> that in a, a little bit. Um, Angela, share a little bit about your background. And, and I'd also love to hear a little bit about how that dynamic works with you and your mom, but we'll get to that in a minute. Wonderful. Um, so I have taken kind of a winding career path. I grew up in the restaurant business. Um, both my mom and dad were chefs and literally had a, a, a nursery in the office of our restaurant. So in a way, we've been working together since the day I was born because she just brought me along with a diaper bag and a babysitter. <laughs> and, and I think that was actually really cool because that was in the 70s before a lot of women were doing kind of the creative solutions for raising children while working that so many women are doing now. So I think that's a really great thing that my mom brought me along. Um, so grew up in the restaurant business. And then um, I've worked in a couple different industries. I worked in the wine industry for a long time, and that was a really great adventure. And I also was an entrepreneur for over a decade. I opened a yoga studio in Madison, Wisconsin, and grew it from a really small um, shoestring operation into a popular yoga studio and a thriving business. And I ended up selling it to a longtime employee, but that taught me a lot. Um, and I think all of the different career paths that I've taken, the one running thread is really entrepreneurship. Anytime I've gone and worked for someone else, I always get drawn back into that. And I think that really goes into what you were saying about empowering women. I feel like when I'm working for myself, um, the sky's the limit. You're limited by money, you're limited by time, you're limited by some real world things. 
but you aren't limited by other people's expectations. Um, you aren't limited by the idea of what role you should play. And I think that's really important. So with Lola, um, I had been, I had gone back to the wine industry and I was working for other people. And my mom at the time was uh, retired and she wasn't very happy being retired. Mm -hmm. um, she had applied for a few jobs and you know, as a 75 year old chef, I think she wasn't really taken seriously when she applied for jobs. And I was working for other people and I was getting a little frustrated that I couldn't spread my wings and try the things that I wanted to. So that's really how the business idea came about. I think we both were feeling, frankly, a little bit stifled. And we were looking for a business that we could do together that used both of our strengths. And I think really the best entrepreneur entrepreneurial ideas come from finding a lack in the marketplace. And we were both looking for products that were sustainable and environmentally friendly. And I was specifically looking for products for very sensitive skin. My skin gets irritated by anything. Um, and I was looking for a shave product and couldn't find what I was looking for in the marketplace. And of course, my mom with her chef background, her first instinct was, well, why don't I go into the kitchen and see what I can whip up? And it started just as sort of a fun project, but I think developing that and at the same time, both feeling like we wanted to start something on our own um, really led to the idea of Lola Arnau and um, the brand being born. How did you select the name? Lola are now. So the name is a tribute to um, my grandma, my mom's mother, and my great grandmother in Sicily on the other side of the family. So my grandmother um, was a very special woman to, to both of us and to anyone who knew her. And she took really wonderful care of herself. Even at 94, she would do little things like spritz on perfume and <laughs> apply her lipstick before going to dinner. Um, and she was just a very, very sweet, wonderful person. Her name was Dolores and the name Lola had been circling around in my mind. And I, I had looked up Lola and it said it was the nickname for Dolores um, in Spanish speaking countries. And I was like, okay, that really clicks. So the name Lola is a tribute to my grandmother and our now is the name of my great grandmother in Sicily. And she's always been sort of a glamorous figure in our family history. Um, she was a baroness and there were all these stories about her just different adventures and so it was a, a la that last name has always been in my imagination and we wanted to we really wanted the name to be a tribute to the women that have come before us and to the idea of vintage beauty because i think that you know we women have always taken time to take care of ourselves and to do the things that make us feel beautiful whether it was my grandmother on a farm in wisconsin or my great grandmother uh, you know, 100 plus years ago in Sicily, but we did it in earlier generations without all of the toxic chemicals, without all of the waste and plastic in a much more natural way. So we sort of wanted to hearken back to that time and hopefully it's a name that sounds a little glamorous too. It definitely sounds a little glamorous. Uh, we we named our, our product line, the Mia Vita product line, which is my <laughs> life. Yes, beautiful name. And as you know, as, a, as an Italian American woman, I also wanted women to understand that it is a little bit of la dolce vita, right? It's a sweet life. We need to take care of ourselves. It's really about you. It's really about self care. Common theme there with what you just described as Lola Arnau. And I love that you decided that shaving should be a special adventure. It shouldn't be. The, throw, the throwaway razors and just a little bit of foam and it's not your husband shaving it's really about you so share a little bit about why you chose why you chose to do a, a shaving bar for silky skin you mentioned some of the ingredients what what's what what is it about shaving that makes women feel special how is this different well I think that for a long time, how how shaving was marketed, it was marketed as something for, frankly, for like the male gaze. It will, you know, the, I think of old ads for shaving, and it's always, you know, a woman in a bikini running on the beach uh, <laughs> with silky smooth legs, right? 
But I think that what is happening now is we're doing things like shaving for ourselves. So for me, I like the way my legs feel when they're shaved. I don't do it to look a certain way or to fit a societal norm. I do it because I like the way it feels. And if someone doesn't care to shave, more power to them. You know, it's whatever, whatever we as women choose to do. And I think that's where our marketing is a little different. But if we're going to choose to do that, um, what we found is that for many women, it's a chore, they don't like it, they do it, but they end up with irritated skin. And it's like a little thing, but I wonder why we as women put up with that, you know, whether it's shaving or so many of the other things that we just sort of put up with that aren't fun, don't make us feel good. Um, and I wanted to change the conversation around it. Can beauty rituals, whether it's shaving or something else, like we may come out with more products down the road that are about body care or self care. But I think if you're going to take the time to do any step of self care or body care that you choose to do, it should feel good on your skin, it should be good for the environment, and it should be somewhat fun and make you feel nice. It should be a ritual. Otherwise, what's the point, really? We so agree with that. that. Yeah. We it's, totally it's slowing, yeah, it's slowing down um, and taking care of yourself. Like, spend a little time on yourself you know women tend to take care of other people do things for for other people for the for the bosses whatever at work whatever um and it's no we're important too and taking little having little pleasures in in life is important from eating something delicious taking time sitting down to eat it and enjoy it or taking time to take care of yourself you know that goes back to your like La Dolce Vita idea. Yeah. Um, I think that is really important. We are so much in a rush and we don't take the time to slow down and enjoy life's little pleasures. We we did something similar at Femme Pharma when we created our product line, our initial product line, which was personal lubricants and vaginal moisturizers and vulvar moisturizers. And we we wanted to dispel the taboos that existed that women had to put up with leaky, gross and messy products. And that somehow this should only be a product for sex, right? Sex is important, but this is really about daily self care and yes. taking care of all your skin. So in our case, we always say to women, why do you stop at the waist? You moisturize your body, you protect your skin, but you stop at the waist. And you really need to keep going. And those mucosal tissues are really important. So keep them hydrated, but do it in a very elegant way. And that's it. it again, the theme is very similar. You have, to, you have to enjoy it. You have to embrace it. If it's disgusting, if it's gross, to your point, Kathy, if you sit down and you wolf down your food and it doesn't taste right and it's full of all sorts of chemicals and it's highly processed, it's not good for your body. And how can you possibly enjoy it? Same thing with shaving. If you're in the shower with your $1.99 shaver and you do, you take five minutes and you nick yourself and you walk out and you feel like, gee, that's a chore. It should be a pleasure, not a chore, right? All these rituals have to be a pleasure. Otherwise they don't become rituals. Absolutely, <laughs> totally agree. So I'm curious about the dynamic, your dynamic working together as mother and daughter. I mean, I know she was probably in her uh, playpen sitting in your in the back room somewhere as, as you and your husband toiled away and greeted customers and worked in the kitchen and did lots of other things being chef entrepreneurs. But how's it working now? What do you love about it? What's challenging? I think we've all, I think personally, I've always worked with family, you know, there were the jobs here and there that it wasn't family, but a lot of my life has been working with family. I was raised on a farm and it was a family business. We all worked together. Um, when Angela was one month old, <laughs> took her to the restaurant, we had a nursery. And when she was sleeping, I'd go <laughs> make something. Um, and then when she was old enough, she helped like in, in middle, and middle, middle. <laughs> I know, she learned to peel peeling garlic. <laughs> She's a champion garlic peeler, but in high school, again, she was working in the kitchen or the dining room and work, we worked, we worked together. It's like, that's, it's a, I suppose it's a lifestyle. You just work together and you complement each other. You find out where your strengths are and then accent those strengths and, and work with it and try to, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, I think there's really no competition because we are mother and daughter, we love each other. And I think that we're working towards a common goal, which is to create a thriving business and to do it in a way that's ethical, that we feel good about, and that we have, have fun with. So it isn't that there aren't challenges, but it's like any good working relationship, we're very committed to um, working together. Uh, we certainly have our times where, you know, we disagree about something. Um, but I have to say it doesn't usually last that long, like we're able to talk it through. And I think there's a really deep respect. Like I grew up, I'm, I'm so proud of my mom. I grew up watching her work in a kitchen. Um, you know, and, and kitchens are a ve very, very male dominated environment. And, you know, when she was working with family with my father, that, that was a little different scenario, but I've also seen her working throughout her life in very male dominated kitchens, sometimes during the last part of her career when she was also the oldest um, person in the kitchen. And she always kicked butt, to put it bluntly. And so I have a deep respect for her work ethic and for who she is as a, a person and as for who she is in her career. So I think that's a different way than just seeing her as my mom. Um, I think one needs a strong sense of self and to develop a strong sense of self. And that helps you get through, get through a lot. You know, I, I know that what I'm doing is the right, you know, is the, is a, is a proper way of doing it um, with, I'm not thinking of the right word, but I think having a sense of self and I've, I say frequently how life is a series of problems and we just need to solve them. So, okay, so we have a problem and I think Angela and I work really well with this. Okay, okay, we've got a problem here. <laughs> and then- Which is entrepreneurship in a nutshell, right? And maybe you could freak out for a minute, but you could only freak out for a minute. And then, okay, how are we gonna solve this problem? And it seems like all the problems do have a solution. So, <laughs> so far in my life, don't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and, all and the work we work problems. together. Yeah, all the work problems have us have a solution. You know, how do we? Oh, we've never done this before. Well, let's find out how we solve this problem. And it can it's challenging. It's actually almost fun. You know, because you're solving a problem. Yeah, and I think our strengths really do come. Even though we're mother daughter and we're similar in a lot of ways, we really do have different skill sets and different strengths. Um, so I think that helps a lot. Like we definitely have our different domains. My mom does. The production end of things um, she does the majority of the shipping um, and she's also done a great job of our getting our packaging put together which i think comes from sourcing and her background in the kitchen with sourcing we've put a lot of care and effort into making sure that our packaging is not just sustainable but as sustainable as we can possibly make it we don't want to greenwash we want to be as real as we can um, with our clients as to how we package the products. We don't use any single use plastic. And she really took the initiative on that. Um, at the same time, I do a lot of the marketing and trying to drive the business forward. So we have very different domains and we respect each other in those domains. We're not stepping on each other's toes usually. It's really important to bounce your and parlay your strengths off of one another. And that's what I'm hearing from both of you. I also love the idea, this is not ageist, which we sometimes we sometimes find once we pass a certain age, whatever that, that certain age is. And unfortunately for women, it tends to be as they gray, the more they gray. And in my case, I decided to let myself go gray during <laughs> COVID, but I, I was one of those individuals who went gray pretty young in her 20s. And as women go gray, they are devalued. And it makes it more challenging. I can, I can certainly understand in the business that you were in that it would have been an enormous challenge, but you overcame that challenge. And now you show other women, Kathy, that there are second and third phases of life. Look at the value that you bring to the business, the mentorship that you bring to your daughter, and the promise that you show women who have passed a certain age, let us say, that life doesn't end there. A career doesn't have to end there. You can have a second and a third act. That's really inspirational. So I applaud you and I applaud both of you for working together as mother and daughter. Um, we have uh, my own, in my own situation, 
not at Fem Pharma, but I do have family who worked together, built businesses, third generation businesses. It is a challenge to survive in this, you know, in a family business, no question about it. And in my own uh, situation, I have no family members that work with me at Fem Pharma because I witnessed what went on in my, in my other, fa in my family's business. And it is challenging and it was male dominated, which is another reason why I decided that it wasn't for me. <laughs> so, so I, but I do see a difference in mothers and daughters working together in a business. I, I love your dynamic. I think it, it speaks volumes about the power that women have when they put their minds and hearts together because we all know that women are capable of juggling so many things. And in your case, you just shared with me so many activities that you and your mom are working on together, solving problems and, not be, and being undaunted by what lies ahead. And I guess that's my next question to you. What lies ahead for Lola Arnell? Well, I think that in any business it's, you have to have the ability to pivot and it's seeing what are people asking for? What do people need and what does the market need? So we certainly plan and think ahead, but we also try to be open to what we see resonating with our clients and where we see gaps in the marketplace. Um, for me, I think that body care and just self-care in general, beauty in general, like we've named our, it's actually Lola are now beauty because we really want that beauty aspect of it to be part of our brand. Um, and I think also just continuing to listen to women and find out what they need. What do you Angela is very good about collaborating with women too. Her, I think I credit her generation more than mine. Um, and I think that's, that's really powerful for women to um, collaborate you know, how is your business going, you know, what's happening in your business, what are your challenges, and talking about it. I think we learn a lot there, and we learn a lot listening to our customers, because they really are opinionated, and they tell you, and you need to listen to them, you know. It's like we got over and over and over again, the sensitive skin, you know, I don't like to shave because I break out, you know. I think the sensitive skin part of it is really the part that will continue to grow, because it is incredible the amount of people, men, women, that have very, very sensitive skin. Um, so I think that piece of it is gonna continue to grow. It's an important segment of the population, particularly as we look at, at individuals who do have special needs, special interests. We, we understand that there are individuals, for example, who have conditions like Shogun, Sjogren's syndrome, where they have extraordinary drying, or individuals that have psoriasis or eczema, where they have, you know, skin that has been debrided or that is broken and it becomes very difficult to use any type of product so you want to find one that gives you the opportunity to deal with those sensitive skin issues i, I think you're definitely on to a market that is seeking something that just doesn't exist today yes and i think that unfortunately because so many products have such toxic um chemicals in them, people's skin, and so much fragrance. Our product is fragrance-free. And I think um, because of all of this in the products we put on our skin, even someone who has very normal skin, over time, it can get more and more reactive. And I know for me, a pivotal moment when we were you know, thinking about creating this brand was turning over the can of shaving cream and looking, you know, we, I always read ingredients when I buy a food, but I turned over the can of shaving cream and looked and one of the main ingredients was butane, which is lighter fluid. And that was a really pivotal moment for me to think like, is this really what I'm putting on my body? Um, and I think more and more people are realizing that what they put on their skin, um, really impacts our health. It can, you know, upset our endocrine systems. There can be ingredients that are carcinogenic and no one wants that. I think we're get, becoming more and more aware of it. It's sort of the next frontier. First, people started thinking about what they were putting in their body and we saw the rise of more organic foods and, you know, people changed the way they ate. Um, and I think the next thing is really skincare and we're already seeing that happen. Absolutely. Um, it, it absolutely is the case. We, we do also see that individuals are more concerned about where products are made. 
So where they're made, how they're made, are they made under good manufacturing practices? Are they made in the United States or elsewhere, right? Because we have different standards throughout the world. So the question for you, are your products made in the United States? Our products are all hand poured by my mom <laughs> in our workshop outside of Portland. Um, we do the manufacturing of it ourselves. She mixes them up just like she would mix up uh, soup <laughs> or <laughs> something yeah. you eat. <laughs> um, and, and we hand pour and create everything. Everything is shipped. Um, actually, we do carbon neutral shipping through a company called Sendal, which is doing some really innovative things. But yeah, made in the USA. Um, made by hand. It's not made at a factory. We don't source it out. Um, and the shipping boxes we have are all from recycled paper, uh, which means they're not cutting down more trees to make it. They're using, you know, cardboard. And in many ways, it's a really simple product in that we're using yeah. simple ingredients blending them you know we're not we don't need to do it in a factory with chemicals it's a handmade product um so. and our shipping boxes are all made in the united states <laughs> yes great yes. right. it's very important uh, particularly now that we keep jobs in the united states so it sounds like this is as it grows it will continue to scale and it will continue to scale right here in the united states probably in oregon where yes you, where your company is based which is really important i have seen your packaging obviously because i've used your products they are absolutely gorgeous the packaging is fabulous thank and you. if you haven't uh listeners if you haven't experienced the the lola are now product line the packaging makes you feel very special we know that that is clearly important because sometimes when we go into the box stores and pharmacies it looks less desirable, let us say, than what you might receive at your door. And it's, again, it does come in a, a cardboard cor corrugated, but what's inside is super special. So I encourage our listeners to place an order. Um, and where can they find you? Uh, webs give us some in information on your website so that we can direct our listeners to your website. So we're available um, online. It's lolaarnow.com. So L O L A A R N A O.com. So please check us out there. And we list all of the product ingredients. Um, our shave bars are really full. Not only is it about what we leave out, like the toxic chemicals and the single use plastic, but it's really about what we put in. So we've carefully chosen things like oat oil, which is extraordinarily. Um, soothing for the skin and healing, mango butter, French rose clay, which helps the razor really glide over the skin. Um, yeah, but check us out on our website. Um, sign up for our email list. We will be announcing new products um, to our email list first. So yeah, check us out there. Wonderful. Well, this has been a pleasure meeting both of you, Kathy Griswold and Angela Gargano, mother and daughter entrepreneurs, leading us away from the old way to shave and into silk and special silky skin with their Lola Arnell product line. It was such a pleasure to have you as our guests. I encourage our listeners to check you out and experience the difference that shaving with Lola Arnell products will provide. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. pleasure. We encourage um, your listeners to, to think that it's there's no age at which you can't start a business. <laughs> it's never too late. It's That's never right. too late to follow your dreams. It really well is. said. Second and third acts. And Kathy, you are just my hero. Just go. <laughs> Thank you, you go, woman. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure <laughs> to see both of you and have you as our guests on the Love Mia Vita podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Jill.